Thanks, Charles, for inviting me to read for Chax Press. Um, I'm going to read five poems from my new collection, Digigram. Um, this is what the book looks like. It just came out from United Artist Press uh, last month. Okay, the first poem I'm going to read is We Can, We Can. We can, we can, truth and lies viral, rampant hatred. An American man dumps boiling water on two sleeping men. A curfew to quell rioting. After a police shooting, if only as simple as a belief in ancestors. In Madagascar, wearing red at the waterfront, may incite an ancestor's wrath. Naked under a sheet at 1 a.m. In the UP, the night so quiet, the trees still. A slight ringing in the mind. We can squash, Mr. Bully. We can, we can. Dear mother, dear grandmother, please send chi. Outside a high-pitched ringing between the rising wind and a chorus of crickets. All other animals in this house are sound asleep. Today we're going to take the bully out, I hope. <laughs> Swiped. On the subway, a tall young man stands over me, baseball hat headphones, fine curved upper arms. His head grazes the ceiling, bending the cost curve, essential for long-term well-being. The train leans left. A woman leans over to adjust the strap on one of her heels, perhaps the possibility of coupling swiped away early on. Headphones can be worn as a necklace with only a hint of a head and tail. The common swift curves its wings, staying in the air for 10 months, this or that haircut and bang, you're an old man. Don't even think about a tank top. A kind of mental framework takes hold. I'm worried about a friend, her hands shaking, her muscles rigid. Even though it's cold and rainy, I wear a skirt. The young man wears a t-shirt, and Glenn Close tones her bones and sinews on Sunset Boulevard. Let's just pretend it's warm outside. Three. Flip it. Gusts of wind and pigeon feathers, blowing east and north, biking west and south to the drugstore on 2nd Avenue, run into Eleanor, a Facebook group, downtown women fighting the bully, flip it in 2018, coughing on 1st Avenue, pull over, adjust to less oxygen, adjust to unprecedented assaults on what is and is not, Passing through the park, nearly every president has a learning curve, but this one is exceptional. Yes, sir, Mexico is our next-door neighbor. Follow the curves around the benches, the large oak and elm trees, like skeletons passing through, like coming home, just glide in, around, and out the side gate, overhead a squirrel's nest with an outer skeleton of twigs, See someone I used to know, wave, zoom by, on 7th Street in front of my building, take off helmet, glasses, and lock up bike, open the door for a neighbor, carrying a big bag. I like your haircut, she says. Philip Glass is happy when someone says, it doesn't sound like you. Okay. A form of light. On the F train, I imagine cutting a woman's hair, revealing her face. Reaching into her bag, she takes out a small bottle of brandy, takes a swig. Less is not more. More is more. The ocean's littered with trillions of tiny plastic particles. Here and there, a red flag warning, weighed, measured, the object of their attention, poked, scanned, x-rayed. The NFL won't buy a pig in a poke. At St. Mark's, Lori Anderson tells a story with her violin, staying with an Amish couple and a grandmother who coerces a little girl, boy into kissing her. When he doesn't want to, a first lesson, Anderson says, 
and sex without affection. The violin tips, turns, when a mushroom glows, energy is released in the form of light. For ten minutes, then whoosh, gone. Low-key, skullcap, no makeup, love her and her violin. And the last one I'm going to read is called Now and Again. Now and again, to cover misdeeds, pull yourself up with exaggeration and falsification. Your allies a glittering who's who in the corporate financial world. Supporters homegrown Detroit right wings. The eighth letter, their icon, 88HH for Heil Hitler. Nonetheless, here we are, moving along as usual on the train. An old woman, late 80s, her hands shaking thin, wears a baseball hat. Every human body a marker in time. A squat woman body like a boxer. Red dyed ear length hair. Unwinds a long snaking bracelet. Carefully reorders and rewinds. Glittering diamonds on the six uptown. A skinny guy, gray messy hair, tiny rimless glasses. Tattered jeans and skirt. A shirt reading a book. Many paper markers. What is it? Lean left, catch Benjamin. Lean further, alter. Walter Benjamin, every human body a marker. To escape Nazis, he took an overdose of morphine. 1940, at 51st Street, I stand up. Have you read Berlin Childhood, I ask? Yes, and he likes it too, my favorite Benjamin. Did you read the early version, the one about the moon? I will, he says. We nod. Then off the train, walking east, just as the moon crosses over the sun, the city in darkness for a fleeting moment. Thank you for listening, and let's have a good election week.